on the record. Paranormal Tales. <laughs> And body cam. Suppose those new Unreal Engine games, how they look so realistic. So let me try to explain to you. I will explain how all those games look so realistic in a four different category. The first will be one lightning, the second will be one props, the third will be one animations, and the fourth one is a, some hidden tricks that they are using while they are developing those games. So they making it more realistic than ever. Lightning is so crucial part for realistic looking, especially in Unreal Engine 5. And Unreal has so many ability and capability to do such a thing. I watched most of the trailers and played body cam, which is recently released. And I got some ideas how they handled some situations. First, I believe most of those games using HDR lightning. What is HDR? HDR is like a, they're, 30 60 degree high resolution photos that people using for lightning and shadow data. For example, if you're using this kind of thing, it's just giving you more clear sky and you will get more sunlight in your scene. And this HDR will give you that kind of mood you see in the HDR photo. So your old scene will look like that. But for example, check this one. This is most in like an overcast day. There's some clouds in the sky. So the lights coming from those HDR lightning data will not be strong as much as the other one, but you can use different kind of HDRs for different kind of moods. HDRs are great and they're pretty high quality, but why AAA games are using, if you're asking, there's some reasons for it. First, they're not so cheap to use for on the performance basis, and it is so not so easy to custom them. Also, art direction is pretty hard on the HDRIs because they have some static data that coming from that photos. So if you want more stylish thing on if you want to just customize some lights in the scene, it is hard to do in the HDRIs. That's why most of the AAA games not using them. Those big studios has some specific people who is working in their studio as like a lighting artist. And those people just doing the lightning tasks so those big studios can create more complex, more stylish, more different looking scenes instead of just pure realism. But not only the HDR, I believe those super realistic games also using Lumen Global Illumination in their scene, just, not just for HDRI. Mostly it's because I'm thinking they're using Lumen Reflection and Ray Trace Shadows. Because if you check the off-transparent objects or shiny things in the scene, they're kind of acting like an uh, ray tracing transculency and those shiny or some windows or mirrors acting not like a screen space reflection but mostly lumen and ray tracing reflection. We cannot be sure how each of those games using this kind of techniques and what kind of elements exactly they're using in the scene but we can just assume based on what we're seeing. Maybe they just using HDRI for concept lightning and concept style then they're trying to match those things with just lumen global illumination and so they can have more place to customize it i don't know how they exactly adjusted their exposure settings because exposure looking insane fine in all of those videos and we just saw one game but when the body cam comes out i'm gonna check how they handle it shadows are also so important for the lightning and I believe they're using so high quality shadow techniques like ray tracing, ray trace shadows, because when the shadows edges getting sharper, it is looking more unrealistic. But when you check off those trailers, you can see shadows are literally so soft and you cannot even understand what kind of part of the scene is more lighter or not, because indirect lightning is working super well with HDRIs and Lumen in general, but they just adjust it perfectly. When the shadows edge is getting smoother and it's getting softer, that means it's looking more realistic, but it is taking much more performance. So everything has a cost. 
Lightning is not all about just shadows and light rays. It's also post-processing is a crucial for the general mood of the scene and, and some adjust the lightning. I don't know what kind of specific settings they're using post-processing because probably every game has their own unique styles. Every game has their more own unique settings on the post-processing. But I believe they just focus on color grading and exposure a lot. Also, motion blur. Maybe they're using some different post-process volume in inner and outer areas, or maybe d different rooms even, because for every part of the scene, you can create a different looking, which is post-processing. I believe they're also using some hidden lights in the scene, like spotlight or point light, but they just adjust it so well, so it you're not thinking like there's an external light in the scene, except just coming from Sun or HDRI, but I believe they're using because indirect lightning in these videos is insane. So I believe they just use some tricks and uh, used spotlights, especially in the indoor scenes, just for help the overall quality. But lightning is not the only one for realistic looking scenes. There's also prop and 3D meshes, which is so important to catch that realistic look. Most of those games using high quality photogrammetry through the scanned meshes and they are a bit different than hand crafted or hand modeled. There's a difference between hand modeled and 3D scanned meshes. Those 3D scanned meshes are, are actually a real objects in the real life. And how we're doing basically, we're just taking thousands of photos from 30, 60 degree. We're taking every angle best we can then we're getting those photos and putting into the computer and computer calculating for us from those photo data and it's creating a realistic 3D model. If you're curious about photogrammetry and 3D scanning in general, please subscribe to the channel and because I'm gonna make a video about how you can do your own 3D scanned meshes in your home without just, without using any expensive camera, which is your phone. I will also show how you're gonna edit those 3D meshes after you scan it and how you can use it in Unreal Engine 5. So make sure you got notified when I published it. Those scanned 3D meshes also has great textures because textures are also coming from those real meshes. We are just not getting the general shape of that object. We are also getting the textures. So lightning must be great when we're taking those photos and you can adjust it after you take those photos, but still textures are pretty high quality on those 3D scanned meshes, and that's why it's looking so great. But those texture sizes is so big, I can assure you, and also those 3D meshes has so many vertex scans, so it means it is so bad for performance, especially in the video game. But there are ways that you can decrease the vertex count. You can do it in 3D modeling programs, or you can use the specific photogrammetry apps for this. But there's also other ways, like Nanite. Nanite is a tool developed by Epic Games for especially those scanned meshes, I believe, because Nanite is working great with high density meshes. Nanite is a good way to handle those kind of meshes, but Nanite itself is not a great tool for video games because Nanite itself is taking so many performance. So that's why most of the games not using Nanite, but instead of they're using more classical performance things like LEDs. Also, I believe Nanite working great with Lumen, which is the global illumination method of Unreal Engine, but not the other lightning types. So if you're gonna use Nanite, I believe you should also use Lumen. If you're gonna use Nanite in your Unreal Engine projects, make sure that prop is verted. What that means, for example, let's say you have a prop and it has like 10,000, 20,000 vertex scanned, then I believe you should find a way to create LEDs because for just 10,000 and 20,000, Nanite is not the best way. But if you have it maybe like 3D scanned object, like I mentioned, like maybe 500,000, 600,000 vertex count, then Nanite is worth it to use, for my opinion. By the way, those developers are not using their own scanned meshes. They're also using some libraries that Epic Games offered to us, to the developers. And this is Quixel Bridge. Quixel Bridge has thousands of different pretty scanned meshes and 
textures and materials and decals that you can use in your projects for just completely free. And I believe those first-person games are also using Quicksilver Bridge meshes a lot in their scene because I found some of them when I'm watching the trailer. For example, I'm going to show you this scene that I made in just two or three hours. And I'm also going to show you the record trailer. You can see some similarities. For example, the echoes, the graffitis on the wall are pretty similar because actually we're using the both graffiti from the Quicksil Bridge library. By the way, don't get me wrong. It's not a bad thing. I'm not saying it's just so easy to use because in overall, uh, environment design and just matching things up together in the scene is pretty hard so there's no wrong thing about using those meshes from the libraries it's i believe completely fine got something from the videos also i watched some gameplay footages especially for the body cam when they're not using 3d scanned meshes you can clearly see the difference between 3d scanned and handmade 3d objects i'm not saying handmade ones are looking bad actually they're looking good but they're looking different because they're next to the 3d scanned meshes so that's why you can clearly see the difference with this way you can understand how those 3d scan meshes are so important for these super realistic games and we came to the animation which is i think it's the hardest part of those games i still don't know how they're completely making it but i got some ideas animations are super important because because even if you made all of those scenes with great lights and great props, if your characters walks and act like an, a log man, just basically made with wood, it will not match the overall quality of the scene, which means it will look so bad. I believe those animations, especially in the body cam, are captured with like motion capture. What is motion capture? You're basically taking a bones data from a real person and you recording him with a special suit on so every motion of the character looking so smooth and realistic because it's taken by a real person when he or she is moving or maybe they have some talented artists they just hand pointed and made it those animations but i don't believe for most of them or maybe they're using both techniques they're capturing in motion capture but they're also using some handcrafted animations too I, I don't know. The movement of the character is looking so good, but there's also one thing. When they're moving, uh, motion blur is a bit helping, for my opinion, because it's just giving that vibe that you moving with a camera. I think motion blur helping a lot to do character animation or overall quality because it's looking realistic when they're moving it. But the motion blur is not high as much as some other games. There's a little motion blur but it's helping also in the post process settings there's some bit noisy and dirty uh, textures on the darker areas when camera is rendering i think it's helping a lot because real cameras even if it's so high quality camera still darker areas feel a bit noisy so those dirty noisy texture on top of on the camera giving that vibe that that footage is like real and i think it's increasing the reality of those animations they made also so clever thing on the faces like all body parts animations uh, working so well but for example in body cam they just blurred the face because there's two reasons first it is looking more realistic like it's a uh, actual like police body cam so you're feeling like it's looking so real but also, but face animations is not so easy, like in body animation. And if they made it, those face animations, maybe with metahumans or something, it will not going to look realistic as much as the body parts. So they just came up with a solution, just blurring that thing. And they just got two birds, with just, which is one stone, which is, I think it's great. And there's a one trick they're using most of those games as much as you can see, they're using fish eye camera style. And it's just so much helping to the general scene level. Those fish eye technique is uh, great because first, it's just making a bit more bubble-ish. So it's not a flat surface, like flat image when you're seeing. Also like real police is using some kind of action cameras. Also they has like fish eye style lenses. 
So it is giving a vibe that it is a real footage. And Winyet is also giving a bit more realistic look, I believe. Those fish are looking realistic because your brain matched the old footage is real because all of those things you see on the internet. So when you see some kind of thing, you're thinking, oh, this is like a probably a real body cam footage from a real cop. It is making you feel like it is real, basically. Sound design is so much important for the scene. I'm not a sound designer and I don't know how they handled it. Did they use uh, some Epic Games features for the sound design or they just have talented sound designers? I don't know, but they made a great work and I wish I can do it too. And sound is also so important for the overall quality because if the image is looking realistic but sounds are bad, then you will not feel like it is real. You will mostly feel like it is made to look like real all of those games are great i like to some great developers making those games all of those are, games are great and I'm, I'm not saying they're easy to make it because making a game is already so hard and those devs trying to achieve something that never been never been made before and i have a huge respect for them i hope they will make those games and they get successful so they will make better games with super realistic graphics that was the video, thanks for watching, I tried to explain how those games are made and what they're using in those games, so if you liked the video please like it and subscribe to the channel, if you have any idea what you're using in those games please write a comment down below so we can all learn, until the next video, see you all.